Welcome to day two of asynchronous learning. Well, what are we doing today? Well, you're focusing on your DF file. Recall that the due date, you look over here, the due date is next Friday the 8th. So, uh, as it says here, now this will be a link when you're, by the time you watch this, this will be a link to what you're, <laughs> to what you're watching right now. And your homework uh, is to focus on the DF file, not on the labs. When you've completed your DF, then you can swing back to the labs. It is important to do the labs, but at this stage, the DF file is more important. Now, if we look back here, you can see the four stages of the design cycle. Uh, sorry, four steps, four stages of developing ideas. And your spec should be done you should have completed your iteration one, gotten feedback, and then worked on iteration two. The next step is to evaluate this iteration two against the design spec and show evidence that you each item in the spec is addressed in your sketches. And then the detailed design will be the, your algorithm expressed in English now it says in English and in pseudocode. Let's double check that. Let's go to the handout. That may not be correct. Let's first look at chosen design. We've talked about these others. Now for, sorry, for de design ideas, the feedback. Now it says your feedback should come from the teacher. I'm not getting much request for feedback. Only a handful of kids have asked for feedback. So not only do you have to get the feedback, you have to record it in your design folder document. So send me an email when you're ready for me to look at your first sketch. Okay, then you have to uh, update uh, your second, your second iteration will be iteration one plus the feedback. Now note also you are expected to uh, create this flowchart down here is an example of the flowchart. There are tons of examples on the web on how to of how you might create a flowchart. This one is not perfect. Note these diamonds are for make are when you're making a decision. Typically, there are two a single in to the diamond, usually coming from above, and then two outs: one for yes, one for no. Now, if the diamond is asking you know, did they make choice number, choice A or choice B, then you could have an A out and a B out. But since you're asking a question, it's going to be true or false or yes or no. Or So there's typically two outs on a, on a diamond. The, uh, the square, the rectangular ones indicate some sort of process. Now, there is another shape, I think I mentioned it, the parallelogram which is used for input output. Now this is output. You're displaying something on the screen. If you're expecting the user to enter something from the keyboard, well that's input to your program. So you would use the, not the rectangular one, but the parallelogram, which is just a slanted rectangle. Um, all, our, all lines should ha be directional, meaning they should have an uh, arrowhead on them. And typically there will usually, not usually, there will always be a single input and a single exit. Now, if you are having a, um, suppose, for example, I think I mentioned this in class, you need to get from this box all the way back to here. Rather than draw a long, circuitous arrow, you can simply, no, I can't draw on this thing, but you could have an out arrow here to a circle, not an oval, well, it could be an oval like this. These are usually circles, um, not ovals. But you have an out arrow to an, a circle here, and the circle would have a number or a letter in it. And then the target location would have a circle up here with an arrow in to this, and the same uh, letter or number that you use down below would appear in here. So it's, it's a jump or go to some other location in the flowchart. Now, I can show you an example of a, a flowchart in a minute. So the chosen design here, I think I've mentioned this. 
you take your design specification, put it in here, and confirm that your sketches and flowchart have addressed each item in your specification. So just copy paste your spec from up here into this table. And then write a short paragraph to evaluate your design against the spec. Now evaluate means to uh, draw some conclusion. Uh, it doesn't mean describe, doesn't mean explain, it means look at the limitations of what you've just done and assess whether or not the design has addressed all the things in your spec. So the chosen design should meet or satisfy the entire spec. You may change the spec at this time if you need to. And then down here lastly is the detail design and we've talked about this uh, here is the algorithm expressed in English and here is the same logic just expressed differently it's the same English but formatted as though it were a program this is not C code this is not Java code this is not code 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 it's pseudocode it's fake it's just an English description of the logic formatted so that it's easier to see the logic and follow the logic. You would pass this off to a programmer and then they would implement it in code. Use Courier New font when you're doing your uh, pseudocode. Now, uh, here's some more examples of pseudocode. Let's take a quick look at an example of work from last semester. Uh, I don't know. Let's pick some. Let's pick Elena. No, can't find it. Okay, let's pick Dennis. Now I'm just picking one randomly. All right, let's scroll down. Here is the chosen design. Now that bookmark doesn't. Yep, guys, if you see stuff like this, you know, your, the link over here no longer works. You need to fix that. Now, what's going on there? That, it says that this is using heading 2. Well, that's not heading 2, it's normal text. So, now you can see chosen design became normal. If I just, I'm going to insert a break. Uh, da, 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 here's a break. A page break. That's how you fix things like this. Now I'm going to uh, change this from normal text to heading 2. And now let's see if it works. I'll, I'll go back to design ideas. Uh, that one's broken too. So guys, please keep your thing working so I don't have to... Anyway, this one is now fixed. Um, don't hand in sloppy work. Check, check these links. Make sure they're working properly. All right, here's his spec, which he copied from above, and then he's got some evidence from his either, well, evidence from his flowchart that he has addressed that feature of the spec. And let's look at his flowchart. Okay, this doesn't work, but here you can see it. It's a little tight. You can expand this. Don't, don't try not to jam it in here. You can use more than one if you have to split it in half somehow, go ahead and do that. Um, now, you can see he's got, you know, there's a diamond here with only one out. If you zoom in on that, well, if, it, if number two is pressed, then stop. What if two is not pressed? What do you do? Well, I get you'd probably have an arrow out back to here. Same here. Now, this is what I was talking about before. He's, these two could be combined. So you could have a single diamond under this, and uh, it could say uh, which option, something like that. And there would be a one arrow going to here and a two arrow going to here. That would clean this up. So if you find yourself with diamonds only with one out, it's time to rethink it. Now notice here he's got this he's got this uh, sort of subflow chart this is not a bad idea so right here he's using this symbol which we haven't talked about 
it says function ask question and over here he's got ask question and then he's got this sequence of tasks okay display menu display number one then what here's another thing you should avoid do not have dead ends in your flowchart there should, should be some linkage back now I guess I guess the idea is when after you did this it would then well what would it do if one two or three is pressed display number one okay it's got to be clear what's the linkage from here back into this main flow so maybe it's not necessary to have this sub function here is not very complicated it could be folded back into here so again uh, we have a lot of dead ends down here these things need to somehow find their way eventually to here how do they do it so uh, yeah so the, this is the feedback he got alright now he updated this still don't know how he's getting back into the function main function anyway uh, there's some good points and bad points in there let's just look at one more uh, let's look at Audrey's and here it is all right now guys if you find yourself with these extra headings in here please remove them you're not deleting any data from the file you're just removing these extra links which are not needed all right so we want to look at the design ideas whoa okay well here's a handwritten one um, this could be improved upon this is a little you know if you're gonna do this take the time to write legibly and uh, you know draw nice shapes um, so there would have been feedback about that okay it's is this an improvement uh, perhaps yeah I guess so um, question number 10 there's a yes out there's a no out here's the input um, yeah I mean okay that's another way to do it okay one more and then that's it Ethan All right, there's Ethan again get rid of these extra headings uh, design ideas all right now look at this this is looking nice having different colors for the different shapes is not a bad idea you can see there now here's what I was talking about before on the S output you go to number one which is way over here okay now he's whoa Ah, this is a this is a no to one. This is go to one. This is go to one. One is up here. So that's the input. It's always nice if you can of make your your uh, arrows sort of. Uh, this should be sort of a, a out and then down on a right angle. Um, it's just cleaner if if the arrows are moving either horizontally or vertically, but not on angles like this. It's just cleaner. But note how he was able to get this uh, stretched out. It's nice and clean, easy to follow. And note also he's using the parallelogram for I.O. He's only doing that once, it looks like. There's more I.O. going on than that, but he has done it. All right, so I would say this is the best of the three. Go find a tool that creates, uh, you know, notice here you can have an arrow that points at another arrow that's legal too so it's pointing here and then going over here all right uh, there are lots of tools that can help you uh, create these flowcharts so uh, that's enough talking for me guys if you need feedback which you do send me an email all right good luck and have a nice weekend